Well, hi guys. So I started a little while ago a Twitter account to quote some of the more wacky uh, things that I found in the Golden Age magazine, which I was kind of going through a little bit. And uh, so if you ever want to follow it, the name of it is Watchtower underscore Wit, W-I-T. What I found was that the writers of that time period were very fond of long run-on sentences that are hard to fit into one tweet. And so it was hard to, even when I ran into something interesting, it was hard to fit it into that number of characters. And then I was also kind of noticing that there were sort of themes that were running through the issues from month to month that it was hard to explain about in one tweet. And so I thought maybe I would start doing a, uh, videos on kind of a recap of each year of the golden age and so I'm not sh so this is the first one so I don't know you know if I'll keep doing it we'll, s we'll see how if it's super boring or not but so I kind of put together all the strangest or most interesting things I ran across reading the golden age and so that's what this video is so and one thing I should explain this is 1922 that I'm reviewing just because that's where I was reading the Golden Age at this time, but I will try and go back and do the first couple of years of issues because there definitely was some interesting stuff from the first three years as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here we see, I think, the first um, editorial cartoon that was in Awake magazine. So just like you'd see in a newspaper. And so this is a little cartoon about some churches were supporting boxing matches, I guess, or having matches in the church. Okay, here we see um, page 218. This is the first, this is when the society started running excerpts from the Harp of God book, which is um, a book by Rutherford here. And these are pretty boring articles. They're more just like stuff you'd find in the Watchtower, so I don't mention them too much in the rest of the year here. But you can see it's got, it's set up for Bible study. It's got the question and answers. There is one point in here that the Bible prophesied modern technology. So you can see on the left there, he says, the railway train has been in use less than 100 years, and yet the prophet of God many centuries ago gave a clear and particular description of the railway train and the manner of its operation, and prophesied that the same would be in vogue at the time of the end. It says he also foretold that, that at that time there would be a great running to and fro by other means of transportation, such as automobiles, electric cars, etc. So that's fun. So there's this long article on against the clergy and churches, and there's a funny claim here, service as spies. It says, an occupation in which the clergy are particularly well suited is that of spies. And the governments associated with the papal empire and with the various Protestant sects have always made large use of them for this purpose, especially in time of war. So that's not a connection I had made before, that the clergy are government spies, and uh, they're quite late on the details supporting that claim in this article. Page 250 uh, makes the direct claim about 1925 here on the left. It says, uh, Only the promised kingdom of God will bring order out of the impending chaos. That, thank God, is almost here. Its beginnings may be expected by 1925. Page 255, we see an ad, which uh, I'll talk about in the early years when I go back to them, the I didn't know Awake ran ads in the magazine. And so, yeah, here's another ad for Miracle Oil, which started a year or two earlier. It was uh, some kind of company run by a Bible student, I guess. And uh, recommends that all the readers of Golden Age pick up some Miracle Oil. Page 314, an article, Facts About Vaccination. So there's a big pro-anti-vaccination debate going on in the pages of the Golden Age over the months. And so this is a pro-vaccination article. So most of the articles, almost all the articles other than the 
initial, like the cover article, are contributed by readers. And so the golden age, like they would run a pro-vax article, and then the next issue, somebody would write an anti-vax article. And so the, the golden age is almost like, at this point, almost like the Reader's Digest, where they're kind of consolidating um, other sources and kind of giving an overview of the news and the government and uh, science and stuff. And there's really very little writing that the Golden Age itself is doing at this point, from what I can tell. So this was a fun Golden Age. The article, uh, the cover series was all about boys. And so that starts here on page 355. And they just talk all about boys and what's good and bad about them. This article isn't super interesting, except to mention that in a month or two, they're going to run a cover series on girls, and that one has some more interesting stuff. Here, page 368, little blurb on radium eyeglasses. And this guy, George, writes in about how bad his eyes were, and then he started wearing uh, these radium glasses in it fixed his eyes. He says, to me, it is a miracle. My sight has also improved, and the Golden Age kindly gives where readers can buy their own pair of radium glasses. Different company than the radium belt that Rutherford recommended here. So here we have page 375, another article by Mrs. Andrew J. Holmes. She is a frequent contributor to the Golden Age at this time, and she always writes health articles about diet and nutrition and uh, medicine, that type of thing. So her articles are always interesting. Some of the stuff she says still kind of holds up um, scientifically today, and other stuff is just really wacky that she advocates for. So this article is about care of children. One thing I liked in this one, here on the left, she says, never encourage a child to eat. A very common practice among parents, but a very harmful one. It doesn't matter if two or three meals are missed. When the appetite returns, the food eaten then will more than make up for what was lost by better digestion and assimilation. So that sounded kind of funny. Page 403 has a funny little section on bald heads written by a featherless man. So this was just kind of a funny little article that he wrote, mildly humorous. He says, bald heads respond to hair restorer in the same way as a doorknob. I know, for I've tried. I grew a few isolated corn stalks, but they died of loneliness. Bald-headed men can console themselves by the thought that nobody can grow hair and brains in the same place. Bald heads remind one of heaven, because there is no parting there. Page 405, we get some more uh, back and forth on medical advice in the Golden Age. So here we see a word of protest by an MD, and talking about the criticism of doctors was overstated. A second letter along the same vein. So then we see a comment in brackets here from the Golden Age staff itself. It says, we found it very difficult to present in the Golden Age any articles whatever on the subject of the care of the human body without bringing down wrath upon our heads. They go on to say, we believe that there is real merit, real virtue in many of the drugless systems of caring for the human body. And so they think that's where the focus should be. Page 416 here, we see another ad, a full page ad about uh, miracle oil. Page 430, see a blurb on sunlight and health. And it's trying to kind of explain UV light here. But <laughs> it says, sunlight, as it has been proved, is more helpful to vitality and health than fresh air. As a vitality builder, there is nothing much better than a thorough coat of sunburn. So there you go. Page 434, there's this article, Dr. Black, by 
a reader named Rebecca. And so this is kind of a recurring series of articles in the Golden Age that are sort of, they're imaginary, they're, they're fictional articles, basically. They're, so they're like little short stories about how, about based on Golden Age beliefs that paradise is coming in 1925. So the article itself isn't that interesting, but it's just kind of funny that the Golden Age ran a lot of these articles about um, little fictional scenarios about how great Bible student beliefs are. Page 451, now we have the cover series on girls. And, uh, I mean, it is kind of a pro-girl article. It's sort of supporting women, but they just, and then every once in a while, they just throw out this very uh, misogynistic or uh, backward view of women's roles, which, if you're being directed by God, if you have a direct line to them, you would think the writing would be somewhat elevated above all the other thinking of the time period. So we see on the left side here, it says, We have no apology for discussing this subject. We could not think of a more attractive one. The man who said, There's nothing in the world more attractive than a little girl, unless it's a big one, expressed the true sentiments of every sane man and most of the insane ones. Men are made to like the girls made that way by the Creator, and made that way by the girls themselves, because they are so lovable. Page 452, so here's this, on the left side, an odd account that they got from the newspaper of a guy, Harry, who's stalking this stenographer named Bessie, and so she went to court to basically, I guess in today's terms, get a restraining order against him. He says he followed her all over town for two years, would stalk her basically all the time. And so the Golden Age really takes his side of the matter. It says the young man investigated turned out to be a proper person, really in love with the girl. And the court was puzzled to know what it could do to help Bessie. Our prophecy is that Bessie will be Bessie Anderson sometime instead of Bessie Gitnick. There's no use trying to dodge one's fate or to dodge that kind of booing. She must be a pretty nice girl, or Anderson would not be so persistent to have her at all hazards. So yeah, that is a little dated. 456, they recommend that women wear a lot less makeup. 457, they get into women who got involved with crime. There's a funny line that says, Most girls are good girls, even the bad ones. Page 463, a, another political cartoon. Pretty crudely drawn, I have to say. But there's a funny point on this page. It says, on the left there, Someday each human individual may carry in his vest pocket his own private wireless telephone, through which he can receive reliable news from various parts of the earth, and communicate at will with private individuals wherever they may be. So, wow, I read that. That's kind of funny. That they basically predicted cell phones here. I guess even a stop clock is right twice a day. Page 532. Remedies for constipation. So you know that's going to be good. So they do recommend a high-fiber diet and using bran, which is good advice. But then it gets even more specific. It says, have a set time for the movement of the bowels. One half hour before this time, work the hard hand hard on the stomach clockwise, starting under the breastbone and going down around the ribs on the left side across the lower part of the abdomen, coming up under the ribs on the right side to the starting point. Do this about five minutes the first day, eight minutes the second day, 10 minutes the third day, 15 minutes the fourth day. This will cure your constipation. So I thought that was pretty uh, fun advice there. Page 551, this is a rather interesting article about women getting involved in business, working outside the home, and the good and bad parts of that. But then it gets into the effects on childbearing 
of the working woman. It says, uh, the attempt to do so, to work and have kids, is an important factor in accelerating racial degeneration. In the scramble, hurry, and excitement of public life, women deplete the reserves of vitality and bear, in consequence, defective offspring. And then it makes kind of a strange-sounding point, which is that it's all part of God's plan because childbearing is going to die out. And um, actually, women are going to turn into men in the new order. There will only be one gender and zero kids. So it says, Neither is her conduct strictly reprehensible, inasmuch as women, as woman acts more as the unconscious instrument of providence, perhaps, than from deliberate purpose in thus unsexing herself. Instead of indomitable mass ambition, cosmic forces are irresistibly drawing her. She's responding to a subconscious urge. A divine golden age impulse is stirring in her, not to transpose the sexes, but to merge them. The present effect is discord in the sex war. The ultimate purpose is uniformity and harmony. Gradually, sex distinctions will disappear, for the Holy Scriptures seem to indicate that, they're finally, that finally there will exist none in the kingdom. <laughs> and it goes on to say that we may regret that. Uh, it's difficult to adjust our preconceptions to admit its likelihood. But basically that everyone will get used to it. Page 564, there's an article on the wonderful cures by the milk diet. And there's actually quite a few articles over the months on milk and how awesome it is. And uh, specifically that only drinking milk is your, and not eating food at all, just drinking milk all day is going to really kind of cure all your ills. So this is one example of the milk diet recommended. Page 579, the Golden Age, the series, the cover series was on habit forming drugs in America specifically opium, morphine, and heroin. So this is kind of a fun discussion of uh, illegal drugs, where they come from, how bad they are. And some of it's kind of accurate, and then some of it just could, goes into scaremongering, reefer madness kind of articles. Page 581, it says, The most devilish of all drugs is heroin. The drug that is specially used to lure girls from the path of virtue. It has the property of producing temporary sex insanity, but is later followed by complete sex atrophy, the pitiable condition of millions of British subjects in India. And then it spins this uh, tale of uh, secret, secret sex societies fueled by heroin among school children in New England. It says in one New England town, which funnily, oddly enough, they don't mention the, which town it is, 20,000 boys and girls, so a reputable Christian physician tells us, were found wearing these badges before the police discovered their significance. Uh, the badges were signified that the kids belonged to this heroin sex club. Page 588, they explain really what the problem is ultimately. You see the subheading there, Demons Back of Dope. And they mention that uh, since Satan and the demons were thrown down to earth in 1914, that they're really fueling the whole drug trade, basically. And uh, as support by, of that, they quote a long quotation here from a spiritualist, Mrs. Lambert proving that the demons are behind drugs. Page 589, there's an interesting prediction about the use of radio in After Armageddon. It says basically that uh, the patriarchs will be broadcasting by radio. It says on the right side there, people will sit in their own homes and get the world news without the aid of hijacked newspapers. In the same way, they'll get moral and religious instructions. Thus, the word of God, the word of the Lord, will go forth from Jerusalem, the world's future capital, 
Thus will communicate the world's mighty princes. A lecture by Moses on the majesty of the law. Encouragement from the father Abraham and from Job. Good words from Daniel, Joseph, and Isaiah. And a warning from the lofty Malachi will be the chief items of the day. So there you go. They mentioned the hijacked newspapers, and this is kind of a recurring theme in the golden age that uh, the Watchtower Society was really frustrated that newspapers were not impartial at that time, which there was probably truth to that, but they were very much controlling what news got out, and there really was no avenues, alternate avenues, to give them a message that goes against the grain like the Watchtower Society was offering. And so I think that helps to explain why they were so big on publishing. It was kind of an alternate method to get their word out, and then why they embraced radio so eagerly and eventually started their own radio station because they, that way they could kind of circumvent what they felt was the lack of coverage that newspapers would give them. Page 606, we see another little, one of these fictional vignettes. Vign vignettes? Is that how you say that? about um, Paradise, A Dream of the Golden Age. This was actually pretty nice. It reminded me of reading like um, Anne of Green Gables, I guess. And it's about the, the man's wife being resurrected and they're reunited in Paradise. So it was kind of sweet. A little less heavy-handed, I guess, than you know the video productions you get nowadays from the society. Page 624. A rather odd article on IRA diagnosis by a quote-unquote doctor. And uh, he says, I'm here in America on a visit to introduce a new improved diagnosis and a new method of healing. And so basically his theory is uh, looking in the eye will help to detect and cure disease, which there is some truth to that. You can detect, you know, diabetes and stuff looking at the eye. But then he goes into some kind of wackier things. He says, every organ has a particular place in the six regions of the iris. And in each region, a special inner organic condition finds expression. So kind of a quack science here. Oh, yeah. And then he says, the lines of the hand and the form of the fingernails have also a meaning. Whoever understands how to read these characteristics can, in combination with IRA diagnosis, discern the physical condition of a person more quickly and surely than through ordinary diagnosis. He says, if the corpse after autopsy speaks to you, it's too late. Let the living speak to you by means of their sign language. Learn this language. So we'll have to see if down the road, if there's an ad in the Golden Age for to learn IRA diagnosis. So page 625, that's followed right up by this article on biochemic preparations. And these are some kind of medicine you can buy. It sounds kind of like homeopathic type medicine. And so again, very kind of quack science. Page 628, the article Rewriting Earth's Literature. And so this is kind of interesting thing. He, the writer's thinking about, well, when all the when Shakespeare and Longfellow and all these great artists of the past are resurrected, what, what are they going to do with their literature from back in the day? And so his theory is that these guys are going to rewrite everything, taking into account the truth of Bible student teachings that has been made manifest. He says, no doubt when he, talking about um, Longfellow here, says, no doubt when he comprehends the grandeur and beauty of God's great plan and sees it being executed, he will want to rewrite his masterpieces and eliminate the errors. <laughs> and then the writer says, how he will rewrite it? I'm not quite sure. But uh, he says, here's, a, here's my contribution. <laughs> so he, he submits this whole poem about how things could be re rewritten in accord with uh, Bible student teachings. Page 629, here's an article, Let Us Be Just to All. So this is an interesting article defending the Christian science religion. And the writer here, this professor, he says his wife is Christian scientist. And uh, so the Golden Age had run several articles 
so far very critical of Christian science. A, a lot of their criticisms <laughs> seems to be that it was run by, uh, what was her name, Mary Baker Eddy there. Just the fact that a woman was running a religion they weren't a big fan of. So here they publish the counterpoint. Page 634, this is an article about how bad things are getting in, again, <laughs> 1922. It says, let us suppose now that this present condition of, thing, of things keeps up for 20 years more. And basically the writer's saying, it is impossible that the world could even last another 20 years. And he points out all these proofs of how terrible things are. He says, 20 years more of this sort of thing, and the, ra the race, the human race, would either go crazy altogether, or else rise and kill, slay, until hardly a soul was left. Think of it, in 20 years, no human race. Page 640, another nice ad for Miracle Oil, with some uh, letters of recommendation from uh, different companies here including Coca-Cola and AAA. Those are looking for sales reps. Page 651, an article, Mormon Errors Exposed, by this fellow who says he's an ex-Mormon high priest. So this was kind of an interesting article all about the endowment ceremony for, for Mormons, for Latter-day Saints. And it seems to be pretty accurate. I mean, he's... For, I've watched the you know, these uh, secretly filmed videos on YouTube of the Mormon endowment ceremony, and they're talking about how similar it is to masonry. But yeah, he, he pretty much lays it all out here in the article. It seems pretty accurate, so that's interesting. Page 655, our good friend Mrs. Andrew Holmes returns with another health article. And this one, she's stressing uh, how great enemas are. On the right side there, she says, the shortest and most effective way to do this, to build your health, is by the daily use of the enema, at least once and twice is better. And the proper selection of food speed. So yeah, she was really into enemas. Page 691. This was a really odd article. Religion on the Moon. And this Harriet Hansen translated, she found this article in Norwegian and then translated it and it's sort of a um, it's fictional um, it's basically like a Gulliver's travel kind of article this guy takes a hot air balloon and travels to the moon and he talks to the moon people and it's sort of an allegory of the different groups on the moon fighting over their re their religious beliefs, which are really almost exactly the same as everyone else, but they're all fighting to the death for their these minor differences. And basically the upshot is that religion is a bunch of baloney. But it's a really wacky article. And then... So she translated and submitted that article, and then she also submitted like a counterpoint article that the Golden Age published here, a, re a reply to Religion on the Moon. And so this is kind of a long thing. She's saying, well, yes, you're mostly right about religion, except the true religion, <laughs> which just happens to be the Bible students. And so she writes this long dialogue here near the end about after 1925, when everything's come true, and she'll be talking with um, the Norwegian guy about how surprised he is that everything came true now. There's a fun section here. It talks about the records of people playing before 1925, and the Norwegian guy says, yes, I heard them, the, the violinist. I heard them in Jerusalem only last week at the New Hall of Music. I sat next to Father Abraham, and he seemed to enjoy hearing one of his dear children praising God through the medium of his violin as much as I did. So this is a very odd article from 1920. Page 718 has an interesting article on music, musical science and pedagogy. 
and uh, the writer makes an interesting prediction here that in the paradise, everyone's going to be a great musician. He says on the right side there, shortly in the golden age now dawning, each individual will become no less a musician than the very greatest of our musical performers. He will be their superior in every way. He will be enabled to excel these past geniuses, not only because of the change in environment, but also because of the superior instructor whom he will have, the Christ. He says his instructor will be absolutely reliable and will take as careful interest in his most backward pupils as in his most brilliant ones. So there you go. Jesus will be giving music lessons in paradise. Page 727. This is a two articles written in response to an earlier article that this Mr. Rosencrantz wrote. And it was kind of a crazy article about how terrible things are going to be right before Armageddon. And this writer, this fellow that read it, really I don't know. He took it to heart. He says there on the left, as far as I'm personally concerned, the reading of the article almost prompts me to finish it all with a six-shooter, or else to go on the rampage and to hell with everything. So he uh, was pretty rattled by the article, and then this second article is basically the same thing, criticizing Rosencrantz's article based on Russell's teachings. Page 750, Golden Age delves into women's fashion again here with a thing on bobbed hair. It says, it's safe to say that those who bob their hair to save time do so that they may spend it on the streets or in worthless amusements. They quote Paul saying women should have long hair. It says, however, it resolves itself into the question, what length should long hair be, and how much should it cover? We hope that no young lady will give up her pretty locks on the advice of a fattest. So unfortunately, they don't give an inch measurement of how long a woman's hair has to be to be in accord with the Bible, but Bob's hair, definitely too short, they say. Page 785, article by Driscoll, who I think is the, if I remember, is the editor of the Golden Age, visualizing fulfilled prophecies. And um, he's talking about this great new invention, a portable film projector called the Kinemo Projection Machine. So yeah, in the past year or two earlier, Rutherford had made a big trip to Palestine and filmed a lot of his visiting the pyramids and stuff like that. And so, basically, it's going to be a side business here where the Bible students can buy this projector, and then they can buy the films of Rutherford's trips to the Middle East. So this article is just talking about how awesome this Kinema projector is. And then, sure enough, if we skip down to 798, here is an ad to buy the Kinema projector. So that is um, not a, so it's not coming from the Watchtower Society. You see it's set up in LA here, but it's directly connected to Rutherford and the Society. So page 818, this is uh, some, other, some other health article with all kinds of recommendations of various wackiness. And so finally, the editor is moved to put a blurb at the end of this article. It says, we publish these various suggestions for what they are worth to our readers. Each one must learn to study his own system and take the course that's for his good. Many specialists differ as to diet, water drinking at meals, etc. No fast rule can be made which will suit everyone's system. So they're starting to say, hey, we're still going to publish all these crazy things, but it's on you what you take from it. Page 820 follows it right up with an article on um, relaxation and whatnot. And so it mentions uh, here on the right side, it says radioactivity and the direct rays of the sun work in the same way. Indeed, it's been found that nothing can excel the benefits of sun rays. Sun baths should be taken often. There is a radioactive pad which bathes your body with sun baths while you work. 
So there you go. Hit up that radioactive pad, which, and then it has some nice scientific diagrams about how <laughs> everything works. So page 13, and uh, the page numbering is a little confusing. Just to explain, the Golden Age was initially published starting in October of uh, uh, 2019, and so each October is when the page count resets. So this is the first October issue, and so we start again at page 1. And so this article, Healing in All Ages, by this Gilbert VLD. I'm not sure what those initials stand for. But it's basically denouncing the idea of using medication to heal yourself, which is actually fairly similar to the Christian scientist outlook. So that's a little odd. But you notice right in the first paragraph, he says, we are now convinced that the giving of drugs is a part of the old order of things under the rulership of his satanic majesty, Prince Lucifer, and feel it our duty to denounce the practice. And this is as it should be. The article goes on to basically take the tone that, hey, you know, doctors, they're, they're doing their best, but uh, they just don't have the right information. We know, basically, we know more than they do. And if they would only take our advice, why, things would be so much better. And this is kind of a tone that you see throughout the Golden Age magazine, whether it's talking about business or politics or medicine, that uh, they'll kind of tear down whatever mankind is doing and just kind of point out, hey, we have all the answers, guys. Just listen to us. And some of the articles even have little um, hypothetical conversations explaining how wise the Bible students are. So it's just kind of funny. Okay, so page 77. Here we have an article concerning intestinal bass by a physician. And he is writing a counterpoint to our good friend, Mrs. Holmes, and uh, pointing out that, hey, daily or twice a day enemas is not a good idea, and in fact is going to have a bad effect on your digestive tract. So, and Golden Age published his article as well, and that's the kind of, um, kind of the modern aspect that we see in a lot of journalism today. Hey, we'll publish two viewpoints and it's up to the viewer or the reader to make up his own mind even if the two viewpoints one is complete hogwash and the other one is scientifically based on page 109 we find we're in an interesting article about uh making movies and this article prophesies that the patriarchs from the bible will be movie directors in the paradise so you see on the right side there, it says the ancient worthies, including Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, will soon be the directors of this industry and will accomplish things hitherto unthought of. It says these noble worthies will have multifarious duties and will need a core of assistance to carry out the details. Hence, it is well to aspire for some of these worthwhile positions of the future. These are days which hold forth great possibilities. So there you go. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be the movie directors in Paradise. In page 115, at the end of some article, we find a comment from the editors of the Golden Age. And there in the right it says, Lest we be misunderstood by others, as well as Mr. Cow, we explain that we believe the American government is projected by its founders the best form of government on earth. To the extent that present incumbents in office adhere to those original principles of the liberty and justice, the government is a success today. To the extent that they are swayed from these principles by political, ecclesiastical, or financial influence, the government is not a success. So that's uh, quite a direct statement by the uh, Bible students. The American government, as set out in the Constitution, the best form of government on earth. And there you also see the three, by this time the, the Bible students have kind of settled into this three-headed uh, beast of uh, 
problems in the earth, the politics, the church, and big business are the three-headed hydra that Satan's using to ruin the earth. All right, on page 118, we see an article about radio development and uh, kind of talking about a little bit about radio stations and how they work. And again, I think, uh, as we've kind of seen the pattern, they're laying the framework for Bible students to buy radios. And also, because the Watchtower Society is going to uh, expand into using radio stations and build their own radio station. All right, at page 126 here, we see a nifty little ad for uh, Bible student uh, publications would be great Christmas presents. So it's kind of a funny ad to see, uh, you know, from our vantage point now. And here's a full page ad along the same lines: books for Christmas gifts. All the uh, Watchtower Society books. So on page 131, this issue of the Golden Age starts out with an article on Esperanto, the universal created language. And uh, they point out in the first paragraph that the Millions Now Living Will Never Die book was actually translated into Esperanto by the Watchtower Society. So that's kind of an interesting little tidbit there. I don't know how many publications they ever put into Esperanto. And uh, I think the idea is, you see the last paragraph there, many see Esperanto as one of the instruments which divine providence is providing for the world's need needs in the golden age. So I think the idea is that people would be speaking Esperanto in the golden age in paradise. That is a thing that never really took off among Jehovah's Witnesses. On page 179, we see an interesting... Uh, article talking about electrons. So the uh, society is trying to delve into physics here and they come with some interesting conclusions. In particular here on the left we see it says the human race are dying, they have not enough electrons and thus are positively charged. Jesus was a perfect man and speaking in scientific language had an abundance of electrons. So there you go. Jesus was full of electrons. And the article explains that's really the source of his power. Because when he would heal people, the electrons would uh, leave him. And uh, that's why he died after his ministry was he was empty. He had run out of electrons. Here we have an interesting article again on page 179. How is the earth to be subdued? So it's essentially sort of a question from readers, and the reader is raising a good point that witnesses still today wonder about, which is what will be the technology level after Armageddon? And the reader is kind of pointing out, hey, who's going to run all the power plants and mine the oil and, you know, how are things going to be run in the new system? In the Golden Age, though, society at this point took the line that, oh, everything will be kind of as it is now, except more so. And so it says that when Adam returns, they believed at that point that Adam and Eve would be resurrected. It says he'll be surprised at the wonderful genius of his children along inventive lines, but his surprise will be no greater than ours when we behold the forthcoming wonders of gravitation control, radio heat, light, electricity, and power distribution, accident elimination, automatic food generation, sound filters, noiseless machinery, gliding vehicles suitable for land, water, and air travel, and freight carriage, and a million other things that will be easy for the men that are to be, the men that are, and the men that were, when that which is perfect shall have come. So that's one of the more direct comments from Jehovah's Witnesses. It's very vague nowadays, but back then they weren't afraid to say, hey, we're going to have all kinds of technology just turned up to 11. Page 182, we can see we're in an article that appears from time to time about uh, recipes that are recommended. And uh, all kinds of recipes for various disorders here. 
And then we get into a little article, a suggestion to sufferers about how to cure hemorrhoids. And uh, the reader points out that, hey, you shouldn't eat food that is very salty or highly seasoned with pepper or mustard. That solved his hemorrhoid problem. He says, this may not help everybody, but I commend it for trial anyway. On the next page, page 183, we see a $10 secret where Mrs. Joseph Levins shares how to give yourself an enema. She says, kneeling on the floor with head almost touching the floor, use the enema. When two quarts have been used, turn over and lie on your back with buttocks raised by one or more pillows. Let the water flow into your large intestines. Stay in that position for two or three minutes while massaging your abdomen, which will loosen up all the poop in your intestines. <laughs> and then as she tactfully says, arise and await results. So there you go. The Golden Age pulled no punches in this time period. And we end on page 192, the last page of the night of the 22 Golden Age, with an ad for more books from the society. And basically saying, hey, haven't bought Christmas gifts for all your friends yet? Buy them books from the Bible students. And they have it all set up here. You can buy a telegram with a one word message there and that will trigger a purchase of any of these things studies in the scriptures the harp of god bible study course the old finished mystery book and we'll get them right to you in time for christmas and so there it is the golden age 1922 in review well anyways i hope you enjoyed taking a look back at where jehovah's witnesses started from and uh, like I say, perhaps in the future I'll do some more episodes on other years from the Golden Age. All right, take care now.